Number 14 then from the 2017 Advanced Tire Maths, up to 10 marks this time for finding the particular solution to this second order differential equation here, given these initial conditions. Well, it should be a well-trodden path that you're familiar with. You just go through the usual route, colouring in the landscape as you go. The three parts are, and I've just put the marks down here as, first part is get the complementary function. The second part is get the particular integral. The two together make the general solution, and then use your initial conditions to get the particular solution. So kicking it off with the complementary function, what would be the solution of this if it were just equal to zero? Well, for that, you construct the auxiliary equation. we we'll just put auxiliary equation like that. I don't know what that extra dot's for. And that would be m squared minus 6m plus 9 equals 0. Doing that gets the first mark. Now, that factorises to m, m. You can see it's a square, the way I did that. Minus 3, minus 3. So you've got two repeated roots. That means the solution will have to be in the form of, you can't have a e to the 3x plus b e to the 3x, because that would just be one lot, and there has to be two solutions, because there's two integrations if you're starting with a second order. So that'll be a e to the 3x plus b x times e to the 3x. For the second mark. Or you could write that as y equals and just take that x out, along with the a's and b's, a plus bx lots of e to the 3x. Should have put that wee bit there, that was the complementary function. Now, the particular integral. Well, it was a bit of a relief it turned out to be that, and not one where you had complex roots in which case it could have clashed with this and made it a lot harder. But that's completely different from this, so you can safely say for my particular integral, I'll just choose it of the same form. I've used A and B already. So, C sine x plus D cos x. Doing that gets a mark. Now I'll need to feed this into this, which means I need the two derivatives. So differentiating this, so sine goes to cos, so that's just C cos x. Cos goes to negative sine, so negative D sine x. Differentiate it again. Now I've got a negative here as well. Negative C sine x. I'll have to stay negative. Minus D cos x. That gets a mark for going through the various derivatives to feed into this. Now you just need to feed it in so you can figure out C and D. Now that's quite a cumbersome thing to do, and I don't, I don't actually like doing that, because you've already got these three things written here, and all you're going to achieve by feeding it all in, apart from taking up the whole of the page, all you're going to achieve is putting in how many you've got of each, then you'll have to pick out the bits. So I'm hoping we can just do this. I'm going to say, as far as Y is concerned, I'm going to have nine of those. As far as the first derivative is concerned, I'm going to have negative six of those. And as far as the second derivative is concerned, I've only got one of those. Because obviously when you put this into this part here, there's only two types of terms, sines and cosines. So I'm just going to put this part down here. I'll have a sine term, and I'll have a cosine term, oops, don't lose your heads, equals eight sine x plus 19 cos x. That's the equivalent part to feeding it into this. I'm feeding it in and tidying it up or gathering it up a bit at the same time. So sine x, just going through it for sine x. What have we got? We've got 9c. Here we've got minus, minus that's plus 6d. And here we've got back to minus c. Cos terms. I've got 9d. Here I've got for cos minus 6c, and here I've got for cos minus d. Now I'm going to count that as feeding it in, because that's what it is. I fed it in and tidied it up a bit. I took these three parts, put them into here, and separated out the sines and the cosines. Now I can form two equations. If these are meant to be the same, 
Then the number of sine here equals the number of sine there. So what have I got here altogether? I've got 8c plus 6d should equal 8. And for the cosine terms, I've got 9, take away that is 8d, but I've got a minus 6c, I'll just put it in that order, plus 8d equals 19. Doing that gets a mark for forming those two simultaneous equations. Now the next mark's just for sorting that out. So that's equation one and that's equation two. In order to sort them out, I could rid of those c's just by adding them, but I'll need three of them and four of them. So if I take three of number one and add on four of number two, what have I got? Well, they disappear, obviously. And then I'll have 18 and four of them and 32. 18 and 32 is 50 lots of D. Same here. I'll have 24 and four less than 80. That comes to 100. So that means D equals two. Now that you know what D equals, you can put it back into one of the other ones. Put it back into this one. 8c plus 12, take it across to minus 4. So c equals negative a half. So that gives you those marks. Now there's no marks in the marking scheme for now stating the particular integral and combining it with the complementary function to make the general solution. I'm just going to finish this bit off. So this means that y equals, now that I've worked it out, because I called it c lots of sine, the c was the negative a half. So that's negative a half sine x. And the d is the 2, which is what I called the cos, plus 2 cos x. There's the two parts. The complementary function and the particular integral. Sometimes they get a little suffix C and P just to distinguish them. But now I need to put them together to form the general solution. Again, there's no mark actually for stating the general solution either. The final three marks now just for working out A and B to get the particular solution. Well, start using the initial conditions. When X is zero, Y is seven. So Y is seven. When x is 0, so that'll be a e to the 0, plus that whole term comes to 0 because you're multiplying by 0, minus sine of 0 is 0, cos of 0 is 1, so it's plus 2. So that just rearranges, since that's 1, to a equals 5. I think I'll pop that in. Now I know what a is, so it now becomes y equals 5 e to the 3x plus bx e to the 3x minus a half sine x plus 2 cos x. Now they got the derivative of that before they started working out, but I'd rather do that first. So one of the marks was forgetting one of these two constants, a and b. You would tend to do that one first. Then you would say, right, now to use the second of the initial conditions, I'll need the derivative, so you differentiate it. So dy by dx is going to be, well, that's a function of a function, so there's a 3 multiplying. That'll be 15e to the 3x. This is a product. So that's going to be plus differentiating the bx gives a b e to the 3x, plus now multiplying by that 3, 3bx e to the 3x. That was the product rule there. Minus a half sine becomes minus a half cos and 2 cos becomes minus 2 sin x. Doing that was worth a mark. Now, put in the next second of the initial conditions. When x is 0, dy by dx equals a half. So you've got this. A half equals 15, that'll just be e to the 0, plus b, that'll be e to the 0. There's an x there, so that's 0. Cos of 0 is 1, so that's minus a half. Sine of 0 is 0. So there's only the one mention of b. I'll put it over here. So b is equal to it. Just bring everything over to the other side. The half goes over to make 1. e to the 0 is 1. 15 goes across and subtracts from the 1 to make a negative 14. So the last mark is for finding this and then just writing it all out. So finally, the particular solution will be 
back up to this one, where was it? y equals 5e to the 3x, now I know b, minus 14xe to the 3x, minus a half sine x, plus 2 cos x. There we go.